Yeah, I'd like to start this off at uh, just say that uh, I don't know if Shaq is just if, if he's still doing the Shaq and a fool, but I probably deserve to be on his Shaq and a fool list after tonight's game. It's the worst freaking challenge I think anybody could have ever done in their career. Uh, I let my emotions get the best of me, and I glanced at the bench, and uh, and I don't even know what the bench said. And usually, I at least look at them to see if they say yes or no before I override them at times, which I have done. I didn't even get to that. I glanced at the bench and I said, screw it, I'm going to do it, <laughs> you know, because I was emotional. So uh, I want to get that out. I want to acknowledge that from the jump street. Um, you know, great win. Uh, SGA is just a tough cover. I, I don't <laughs> – it'd be interesting to go back and watch the game, but, you know, 18 free throw attempts, that, that is, that's hard to overcome. It is hard. It's hard to overcome, and maybe the officials are right. I, I I don't I don't know, but you know, obviously they had to foul down the stretch. If they didn't have to foul down the stretch, they would have had double digit free throws against us. And that's you know, third place, fourth place. I don't know what place team they are, but I give my guys a lot of credit because that is hard to overcome when you have a great player like that and. You know, he gets to the free throw line 18 times. Um, our guys kept fighting. They stayed with it. Um, and they, 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 they found a way. Obviously, uh, Fox's 41 was huge for us. Uh, Domus uh, with another double-double again. It, it, that's a, basically the standard for him uh, with his double-doubles. Um, but I, I, I thought our, our, our bench was really key tonight, you know, uh, I thought uh, um, Malik coming off the bench was huge. He was our defensive player of the game. Uh, in the last game against the Clippers, he tried to take two charges. Uh, tonight, he had two verticalities and he took a charge. You know, and this is something that I've been trying to work with him since last season. And you know, to see him trying to step up and put his body on the line for the team. It just, man, it just, it, it warms my heart. It really does. I mean, I, I am, man, I'm tickled to death. I'm inside to see him trying to make a huge change, and especially in something that he, he, he's not comfortable doing. And uh, I just, I applaud him for trying to do it. Having said that, you know, Trey took a charge too, which was huge for us. And then, you know, Keon. Keon was big. He's been big ever since we gave him minutes. Um, he just doesn't seem to get rattled out there. And, you know, teams continue to leave him open. He shot 40%, I think, or from the three in the G League last year or close to it, if not around that number. And, you know, he had a lot of open looks tonight, and, and he knocked them down. We have faith or confidence, however you want to call it, in him, especially when his feet are set and, and he's shooting wide open catch and shoot threes. But uh, heck of a game from him on both ends of the floor, and he could have easily gotten uh, the defensive player of the game. But uh, uh, Malik with the two verticalities and, and taking that charge uh, is big. What a block by Keon. I man, oh, wow. Anyway, the last thing I would say, say too, I you know we we talk about although we defended in stretches, you know we needed every one of the twenty two second chance points that we got, and uh, you know keep looking at Malik, he, he he now leads the all reserves in assists, so I you know I keep saying sixth man of the year, he's probably I think he's fifth in an overall point, fifth in overall points, uh, you know. So th these are special numbers uh, from a guy that, that's helping us win games. Mike, you brought up key on there. Um, when you were going through training camp and getting ready for this season, did yeah. you have any idea that he was going to have this type of impact for you guys, the energy that he brings, the defensive presence? The, the defensive presence, yeah. I, I felt he, he's just – in practice, you could see it. He's long. He's active. He's in the right spot. He does a great job navigating pick and rolls and even pin downs. You know, there's some guys. There are guys out there that are great shooters that 
you know, you say, hey, you got to lock and go first. Those guys, you know, whenever a pin down comes, you got to chase them over, you know, get in their body and try to go over the top with them or chase them over the top to run them off the three point line. Um, just like in the pick and roll, there's some guys that you got to go over the top just because they shoot it really well. There are also some defenders, and, and again, I am not. I am not saying Keon is Bruce Bowen. I am not saying Keon is Bruce Bowen, okay? But I am not saying Keon is Bruce Bowen. But there are some defenders like Bruce, a guy like Bruce Bowen, who you give him the choice. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like if a pin down comes and hypothetically that's Reggie Miller, well, he's good enough to where sometimes he can shoot the gap and still get back to him. Or in a pick and roll situation, you know, if that's – you know, a, a guy like Dame Lillard type player that can shoot the three, you know, sometimes you, a, a guy like Bruce can go under and still get back to him. You know, uh, Keon has those types of instincts and then his length and his quickness allow him to sometimes recover when he doesn't make the right basketball read defensively. You know, and so, you you know, you could see some of that in training camp. Um Obviously, like I said, you, he shot 40% or whatever it was from the three in the G League, so you knew he had a decent uh, stroke when it came to that. Um, but him getting the opportunity at the points guard spot, I even said this in training camp, you know, I was going to give, obviously, Davion an opportunity, but I was going to look at Colby. I was going to look at Keon. And then we also had Jordan Ford there, so... He was going to get a shot. He just got a shot. At, I think Colby was the first one to get it, and then he he got it after him. And with his demeanor, it doesn't necessarily surprise me. Along those lines, Mike, seeing Keon in the rotation is one thing, but seeing him closing out games too and having that trust to see him do that, and especially tonight, um, what does that say about what he's been able to accomplish? Uh, it, it, it says a lot, the short amount of time that he's been here. I, I, I think his time in the G League last year uh, helped him f for moments like this. And and I say that, you know, I've been around other players that have spent, have spent time in the G League. Even a guy like Jordan Poole, he went to the G League bubble. And you felt and saw his confidence when he when he was back, you know, and and so spending time down there, having a chance to make mistakes, play freely, knowing you're still going to be on the floor, even if you make mistakes, is a huge advantage to these young guys. And I thought he did a great job taking full advantage of his time down there. And now he's getting an opportunity, <clears throat> and he's been in situations like this on a professional level, and he's shown the maturity to make the adjustment without the moment looking too big for him, which is huge for us because he's he's been really good for us on both ends of the floor. Coach De'Aaron has been knocking down a uh, high percentage of threes on, on a good amount of volume. Like, What have you seen from him when it comes to his confidence there? Do you feel like it was always there, or have you seen it grow over time? And how good do you think he can be from there? I, I think he can be really good. But, the, you know, the thing that uh, <clears throat> I like more than anything else is – it is, and, you know, I I don't, I didn't look for the stat, but some of our stats people told me that he's still attacking the paint, or he still roughly has the same rim attempts. Um, so if he's still attacking the rim like he did last year, um, while shooting 38, 39 percent from the three, <clears throat> that's it's great because he's taking the right shots. What that means is he's. He's probably taking more threes than middies this year, but he's still getting to the rim too, and that's a pretty good combination coming from a guy like Foxy. Mike, it seems like DeMondis Sabonis has these monster stat lines and monster games on nights where his teammates are shining, and uh, I'm just curious, the, the I guess the benefit that, a player like that has where he almost can sacrifice his shine and his attention and do the little things so guys like De'Aaron or Keon or Malik can can do what they do? Well, it's, you know, it's, <clears throat> you know, when, when guys step up and have the types of games that they have, you know, yeah, you, you talk about them, but, you know, I, we don't take Domus' ability to get a double-double for granted. I mean, he's 
works his behind off. I mean, he plays extremely hard every possession. Um, he he makes it hard on the on the other team uh, with their inability to switch and stuff like that because he'll take advantage of them on the post or he'll take advantage of them on, of them on the glass. <clears throat> and he obviously helps get some of these guys easy looks. So uh, it doesn't go unnoticed, and y- y- you know you expect that from those guys, just like. You know, you expect Fox to have a big game because there were times where Fox has had what some people might consider a big game, but, hey, that's what you're supposed to do for us in that spot, you know. Um, and so I, 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 I look at it as, you know, hey, he had a double-double. That's what he does, and almost a triple-double because he, you know, we run a lot of stuff through him and he can pass and he's smart and all that other stuff. Fox, he had... 41, we needed you to have 41. This is a big game. And so that's why I just mentioned both those guys. But I talked about Malik and Keon and, and even Trey to a certain degree, you know. Mike, you uh, you mentioned before the game kind of the entertainment value and, in, in, you know, seeing Fox and Shea out there together. What I, I imagine you, you weren't disappointed in what you saw from either of those guys. Uh, no, but I, I, I wish I, you know, I, I – It'd been nice if I had some popcorn and I was sitting in y'all's seat or something like that, because I, I you don't really get a chance. You get a chance to watch it, but you don't get a chance to appreciate it probably like you guys do and the fans do all the time. 